Bitcoin has made small fortunes for millions of people around the world. In fact, if you're watching this video, it's likely that you or someone you know has made quite a bit of money investing in Bitcoin. However, all of our gains are just pennies in comparison to the world of Bitcoin mining. So here's the inner workings of Bitcoin mining and why it's so difficult. Starting off, let's take a look at how profitable Bitcoin mining can be. CleanSpark, a company involved in Bitcoin mining, revealed that it only cost them a mere $6,000 to mine a Bitcoin. Considering that a single Bitcoin runs upwards of $40,000 today, it's no question that mining companies are set up to make quite a bit moving forward. But how exactly does Bitcoin mining even work in the first place? Well, Bitcoin miners are essentially just auditors. They get paid to ensure that each Bitcoin transaction is indeed legitimate. This system is designed to prevent something called double spending from happening. Double spending is when someone uses the same Bitcoin to make multiple purchases. For instance, someone might try to pay for Starbucks and groceries using the same Bitcoin. In such a scenario, it would be the job of the miners to basically flag one of the transactions as illegitimate and cancel transaction. In order to do this, miners go around verifying block by block. Each block is just one megabyte worth of Bitcoin transactions, and this is where the tedious work comes in. People often describe the stage as being heavy computation, but really, nothing specifically challenging is really taking place. It's really just brute force. Imagine your friend gave you his iPhone and it has a 4-digit PIN password. He wants you to verify what the password is and he gives you a couple of hints. For instance, he might tell you that the passcode is above 2000 but less than 8000. Given that there are 6000 numbers between 2000 and 8000, this task should on average take you about 3000 tries. Bitcoin mining devices are doing exactly this. However, instead of trying to brute force a 4-digit passcode, they're tasked with verifying a 64-digit hexadecimal number. Now, miners don't actually have to crack a 64-digit hexadecimal number itself, as that would be nearly impossible even for supercomputers simply due to the raw number of combinations. Rather, miners are tasked with verifying something called a target hash, which they guess using nonces. Nonces are single-use numbers that are related to the 64-digit hexadecimal number, but they are much smaller in size. A nonce is only 32 bits in size, while a hash is 256 bits in size. Going back to the iPhone passcode example, this is the same as your friend telling you that the passcode is a factor of 10. This information would reduce the number of guesses you would have to make from 10,000 down to just 1,000. Similarly, a nonce is simply a condensed way of verifying a 64-digit hexadecimal number. Though a nonce makes the verification process easier, it's still extremely difficult. Currently, the odds of verifying a block on your first try is 1 in 17.59 trillion. And here's the catch. Simply verifying a block is not enough to earn Bitcoin. You have to be the first miner to verify the block to get rewarded. To make things even worse, every 4 years, the reward for mining a Bitcoin is halved, meaning that only the most efficient miners will survive long term. Evidently, the first major obstacle for mining Bitcoin is the pure difficulty of mining Bitcoin. You have a 1 in 17.59 trillion chance of mining a single block. So, having a mining rig with a high hash rate, or a high number of inputs per second, is required. You might have heard about miners using gaming GPUs to mine various cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. But, in terms of Bitcoin mining, even the RTX 3090, which is a $1500 graphics card, is not nearly enough to mine Bitcoin. To have a chance of profitably mining Bitcoin, you have to get a Bitcoin ASIC. An ASIC, or an application-specific integrated circuit, is basically a computer specifically designed for one task, which in this case is Bitcoin mining. A popular ASIC for Bitcoin mining is the Antminer S9, which has a hash rate of 14 terahashes per second. In other words, this rig can attempt 14 trillion different combinations every single second. Now, that might sound impressive, and it is. But even with all that mining power, you likely get squashed by mining companies. Take Riot Blockchain for instance. Currently, they have 6,040 Antminer Bitcoin ASICs. Together, these boast a hash rate of a whopping 456 petahashes per second. To put that in perspective, if each of those hashes were one second long, that number would be equivalent to 14.4 billion years. On top of this, Riot also has 800 S19 Pros being installed within the first four months of 2021. And, they expect that this will raise their overall hash rate to 1.45 exahashes per second. That's the same as 1.45 million, million, million hashes per second. Clearly, they're not messing around. And, that's just one Bitcoin mining company. 
there are several of these guys who currently dominate the Bitcoin mining market. But let's say you're willing to go up against them. Your next biggest challenge will be capital. The Antminer S19 Pro starts at $8,000 per unit. If you're willing to invest about $25,000, you'd be able to get your hands on a solid 3 ASICs. Considering that each S19 Pro is capable of 110 terahashes per second, your setup would be able to get a solid 330 terahashes per second in total. This translates to about $2,211 worth of Bitcoin every single month or $26,910 every single year. At that rate, you could break even in about a year. But there's still one major component that we have yet to take into account, which is the cost of electricity. Generally, we write off electricity costs as a non-issue when buying new electronics. But these ASICs are power-hungry beasts. Each S19 Pro has an energy rating of 3,250 watts, meaning that your rig will consume 9,750 watts every single hour. In the US, the average rate per kilowatt hour is 13.4 cents, and when you factor this in, your gains nearly get cut in half. Your profit per month after paying for electricity is $1,270, or $15,460 per year. Now, that's still a pretty great return on investment, coming in at about 60%. But there's one more major concern in jumping into Bitcoin mining, which is the volatility of Bitcoin. All of the numbers we just discussed are based on a Bitcoin price of roughly $38,000. But Bitcoin can easily dip back to $20,000 or even lower and stay there for years before rallying once again. If this were to happen, you would likely no longer be profitable. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it costs companies $6,000 to mine a single Bitcoin, and that's when they have thousands of top-of-the-line ASICs working 24-7. Considering their skill, they're likely also able to negotiate lower electricity prices. With that being said, an individual's cost to mine a Bitcoin will likely be well over $10,000 and maybe even over $20,000. Thus, if Bitcoin dips like it often does, you would quickly become unprofitable. This isn't that big of a deal if you believe in Bitcoin long term, as Bitcoin will likely be a lot more than $38,000 10 years from now. However, you won't be able to continue mining unless you have large cash reserves. Here's the thing, if your mining operation is unprofitable at the moment, you can't sell the Bitcoin you mine to pay for the electricity. If you sell your Bitcoin in such a scenario, you would be selling it for less than you paid to mine it. At that point, it would be better to just buy Bitcoin instead of trying to mine it yourself. If you have large cash reserves, however, it may make sense to pay for electricity in the meantime. And, 5-10 to 10 years down the road when Bitcoin appreciates once again, you would become extremely profitable. But, for the average person, private Bitcoin mining is not an option whatsoever. There are other ways to take advantage of Bitcoin mining though. One solution is joining a Bitcoin mining pool. Mining may be extremely hard individually, but as a group, the risk to reward may be much more appealing. As we all just saw from Wall Street Bets, there's definitely power in numbers. Anyways, mining pools are just groups of miners who get together online and split the pot in proportion to their respective hash rates. This significantly reduces the chances of mining a block and not getting paid at all. It's likely that even if the block you've mined doesn't end up paying out, someone else in your mining pool had better luck. Another option to take advantage of Bitcoin mining is buying the stock of Bitcoin mining companies. The only problem here though is that you wouldn't be the first person to get this idea. Over the past couple of months, investors have already bid up the stock of companies like Riot. Moreover, the stocks of these companies more or less fluctuate the same percentage as Bitcoin. So you might as well just buy Bitcoin itself. At the end of the day, Bitcoin mining can be lucrative, but it is also extremely difficult. So unless you have solid experience or are willing to potentially burn the money you invest into Bitcoin mining, it's probably best you stay away. Even the big mining companies have been struggling to turn a profit despite having a pretty low mining cost. You have to keep in mind that Bitcoin was under $6,000 a coin not that long ago. Also, these companies have been investing all their profits plus more to update and grow their various mining centers. As a result, most of them aren't even profitable today. And that just goes to show how difficult Bitcoin mining really is. Are you guys invested in Bitcoin? Comment that down below. Also. Drop a like if you guys think Bitcoin is going to the moon sooner or later. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.